And I remember sort of being overcome with the monochrome effect. Everyone who was walking about seemed to be, um, well, they seemed to be as if they were on a black and white television. Uh, they were wearing shades of blue or black or brown or beige. I thought, oh, I suddenly thought, how dull. Um, you know, why do we try to uh, hide ourselves, camouflage ourselves, to look as inconspicuous as possible? But then, actually, um, a young lady came by with her man, and she, um, I don't think it was Kate, it might have been Kate, I don't know. Uh, but um, she was, you know, dressed in a colourful frock with a, with a colourful cardigan and coloured hair and dyed some sort of colour, blue I think it was, and I thought what a flash of brilliance in, um, on, on a dull winter's afternoon. And as you probably noticed, I like to wear bright, bright clothes too. Um, got the orange shirt on the um, yellow trousers. And, um, you know, I just, I, I like the bright and bold primary colours. And I feel a lot better when I'm out and about if I'm wearing something bright. Um, but really, it's a substitute really for not wearing any clothes at all. Because that's how I prefer to be. Um, uh, and I would, were it not sort of socially unacceptable in many um, public situations. <laughs> Oh, right, that's gone the other way. I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, that, okay. Um, so this talk is about naturism, as it's called, and I'm going to start by asking you a few questions, which you don't feel obliged to answer, but just a sort of straw poll. I'm not going to uh, speculate on the answers or anything like that, but just put your hand up, actually. Um, you can tell I was a teacher at one time. <laughs> <laughs> can I ask who among you can say they feel comfortable by being naked. That's when you're not in the shower or having sex. Oh, that's great. Good. Good. Okay. And now, the second question is really, has anybody among those people gone naked, gone public with their nakedness, perhaps on a foreign beach somewhere? Great. And who's done so in this country? Well, well, that's jolly good. Now, is, is there a difference then between naturism and nudism? Well, actually, the Oxford English Dictionary uh, gives nudism as a synonym of naturism. Uh, now, I prefer the term nudism because I think it sort of tells it like it is. It's about going naked. And naturism is a rather twee term. I think it's sort of... Um, seeks to almost disguise what it is about. And don't forget that the word naturist can be confused with the word naturalist. I actually did once see advertised an event at which David Attenborough was going to. <laughs> <laughs> and he was described in this advert as that well-known naturist. <laughs> I hope you never saw it, uh, but uh, he may, uh, naturist he may or may not be, but I think, I, I hazard a guess that his fame is probably uh, more to do with his skill as a naturalist, in fact. And to ask uh, anyone uh, among your friends to accompany you to a naturist event, you've got to be very specific about what it means, um, I always think that, uh, you know, if they think it's a naturalist event, they can come loaded up with... Um, um, binoculars and hand lenses and botanical volumes and notebooks and of course far too many clothes. So my passion is then to be there, there we are, there's the natural <laughs> Do you know who that is by the way? Roosevelt. It is, yes, Theodore Roosevelt. <laughs> well done. My passion is of course to be naked as often as I possibly can be and although I may save a small fortune on the use of the washing machine, uh, dry cleaning bills, while clothing retail stores make a pitiful profit from my custom, um, it's not always been the case, in fact. Um, when I was at uh, secondary school, a boys only secondary school, it was a regime in the early 60s, yeah, early to mid 60s, it was a regime of communal showers after PE lessons. And all the other boys seemed to happily undress and walk noisily through the showers. I was actually mortified at having to do that. 
um, the prospect of it absolutely appalled me. And although I hated PE, um, I was sort of willing the lesson to go on so there wouldn't be time to have showers before the next class. Um, but then, uh, I suppose, um, I must have had sometime in my 20s a sort of road to Damascus moment um, <laughs> when, when I sort of started stripping off on family summer holidays on, on the quieter beaches somewhere. And um, from then on, it became a bit of a struggle to get me to put clothes back on again. <laughs> now, clothes, um, well, why do we wear them? Well, actually, we've only been wearing them for about uh, 70,000 years. We're the only mammals to do so, and presumably it all started when we got a bit cold. Um, although Charles Darwin recalled seeing naked natives huddling together in the cold, well, in the mid-19th century, he sailed past Tierra del Fuego. Uh, but clothes stuck. And now, when it is perfectly warm enough to go without them, well, they do literally stick, um, for we still have a layer to main what, maintain what's called decency. Furthermore, we can be and are judged by the style of clothing that we may adopt. Um, although it's well known that the ancient Greeks competed nude, or at least the men did, in athletic competition, and various religious sects over the years have espoused uh, nudism as a, a way of uh, detaching themselves from all worldly attachments, uh, social nudism as a leisure pursuit only really began to grow in Europe in about the 1920s. Uh, especially, I have to say, in Germany. But the popularity soon spread to the UK, where what were called sun clubs began to grow up. Um, and there's a bit of a euphemistic term, really, because um, it's normally raining, of course, in, in the UK. <laughs> um, and, but sun club became gatherings of, uh, behind sort of, high fences and walls, are, are, are gatherings for naturists, like-minded naturists. Not surprisingly, uh, in the 30s when Hitler came to power in Germany, uh, the movement got, um, uh, got a big blow because uh, they weren't prepared to put up with it really. And Hermann Goering proclaimed, one of the greatest dangers for German culture and morality is the so-called nudity movement. Uh, right, now, um, what are the benefits of naturism, of going without clothes? Well, there are, there are indeed health benefits, both physical and mental. Now, the N NHS website, uh, unsurprisingly, does not sort of promote naturism. <laughs> Um, but it does go on at some length about the creation of uh, vitamin D by the action of sunlight on the skin. Um, while, of course, quite naturally explaining about the, the dangers of too much uh, exposure to the sun. Mentally, I, for example, always feel much in a much calmer frame of, frame of mind when not encumbered by clothes stress levels can be significantly reduced. And you will find, if you try this out, that naturists tend to be friendly, tolerant, non-confrontational, accepting sort of people. And it is quite true, I think, that stripped of clothes, there's a certain non-judgmental um, unity among like-minded people. You're not judged anyway on the characteristics that can be inferred from your style of clothing. Everyone is as bare as they were on the day they were born. Um, of course, you can still be judged on your personality, but at least there are fewer preconceptions. Naturism promotes a feeling of uh, freedom and well-being. And think of swimming in the sea without costumes, which those costumes which, when soaked through, have to be removed with the greatest difficulty under a tangled tent of toweling, 
with you uh, tr contorting yourself every which way to avoid drawing attention to yourself. Of course, nothing is more guaranteed to draw attention to you than doing exactly that. And when bathing costumes were woolen, well, it just doesn't bear thinking about it, does it? <laughs> so, well, they're enjoying themselves, aren't they? Uh, what are the pitfalls? Um, well, yeah, sorry, no, that's the next paragraph, sorry. Right, okay. Well, in fact, personally, I'm not actually one for sun clubs very much. Nor for sort of lying about roasting and getting overcooked on some beach somewhere. My tolerance level for that sort of thing is sort of well under an hour. So I became interested in nude walking. A kind of free-range naturism away from the official or unofficial clubs and nude beaches. I began to experience the great British countryside in my birthday suit. That's the title of the talk. What are the pitfalls in walking nude? Okay. I'm sure you can think of some. <laughs> it has been pointed out that other people's tolerance is has to be taken in context. So a group of naked walkers on a hot day somehow seems okayish. You know? um, and indeed that tolerance sort of um, increases proportionally with temperature. So you're really legitimate when the temperature reaches the mid-90s. Now it was with a, a wry smile that when researching uh, material for this talk I came across a little book that I bought it back in the 80s um, about walking in the Peak District. And at the back of the book were some instructions given by the author about kit and equipment for walking in the hills. And uh, it, it was, yes, under the title Equipment Notes, Some Personal Thoughts. Well, he goes into, the author goes into minute detail on boots and socks and waterproofs. Um, though he did admit that as you walked along, you did generate heat. And you could get quite, quote, hot and clammy. Now, I, I, could I never be one to recommend you going out onto the hills in foul weather, ill-equipped. I mean, we hear too many stories about that anyway on the news. But, you know, the author wasn't making any uh, allowance for the fact it can actually be sometimes rather hot in this country. And then there's no need for clothing at all, except for something in your now much lighter rucksack for an emergency cover-up. And how thrilling to be up there in the hills without a stitch on, on a warm summer's day, and feeling part of the nature all around you. Well, OK, back to reality, I suppose. I am a member of a nude walking group called Naturist Ramblers, which organises long all-day walks in the south of England, and also organiser of a group uh, doing shorter walks in this area, Kent and Sussex, called Stark Trekkers. <laughs> Last time I did the talk I said think about it But I didn't have to tell you Because you thought about it <laughs> Okay um, Okay it's a bit of a pun there Okay walks are organised In such a way That they avoid walking hot spots uh, And well known dog exercising areas <laughs> For at least two reasons. <laughs> um, but of course the question you're going to have is what do you do if you come across a textile? Now a textile is a name we naturists give to a non-naturist. And what happens is... <laughs> The leader, or the person at the head of the queue, on spotting a textile walking along and approaching, will turn round and do this sign. 
the letter T for textile. Um, and then we all do an emergency cover up. Um, but you know, you may stumble across a group of people just coming round. Uh, in which case, we just carry on with a friendly greeting, because there's nothing more ridiculous, actually, uh, than trying to scramble into shorts uh, when you've already been well and truly spotted. <laughs> when, so when we are spotted, what about reactions from the public or from the textile who... Who has who's been surprised by seeing us? <laughs> well, you'd be surprised that it actually is generally quite positive. Um, you get people who actually secretly admire what you're doing and thinking, well, um, gosh, I perhaps I wish I was doing that. Um, uh, you know, they, uh, one couple, for example, uh, uh, c uh, we came across. Uh, whom we didn't cover up for because it was too late, basically, <laughs> said, very good-humouredly, they said, um, well, you're not on the church outing today, are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think sometimes people think we're brave because the weather is uh, only sort of uh, mid-70s or something, or we're brave because we're running the gauntlet of public disapproval. And then you get... Uh, the people who um, mildly embarrassed, I suppose. Um, one woman uh, came across a, a small group of us who were toiling uphill on the sunny, the hottest day of the year so far. We just toiled up a sort of mile-long hill, and uh, she said, "Aren't you cold like that?" <laughs> um, and then there'll be the people who sort of pass by in a confused silence. But it really is only very few people who actually take exception to the nudity that they have witnessed. Um, now both ends of that sort of spectrum were noticed on one especially warm day when we're walking in Ashdown Forest. We came upon a lady dog walker emerging from a woodland path who wanted to take a photograph of us all, all 30 of us, because otherwise her husband wouldn't believe her. Uh, so we were happy to oblige. Well, by, well, by contrast, um, another lady who had glimpsed us at a distance much earlier in the day had uh, written on her local Facebook page, about the disgraceful sight she had witnessed. And no doubt hoping that all her friends on Facebook would agree with her. She would not have been nonplussed, I'm sure, by the, um, by the responses to that, which basically said, what a good idea on such a hot day. <laughs> uh, so she, I think her, sort of, um, her plan uh, fell by the wayside there. But another thing you're going to ask is, but what of the law? Is it possible to fall foul of it? And I have to say, yes, it is a possibility. But not so easily as you might think. And one of the reasons is that nakedness in itself, in this country, is not actually illegal. Strangely, uh, yeah, well, you can imagine that in certain countries uh, in the world it is illegal, and that's true, but it is actually illegal per se in France. Liberal, broad minded France, that is to say. Um, but it's, uh, it's not easy for um, a prosecution to be brought for simple nakedness in the British countryside. Um, So what else can the free-range naturist do today, apart from the walking that I've talked about? Well, there are various outlets which do suggest that body taboos are starting to break down. For example, you can go on a naked bike ride. You may have heard of these. 
They're held in London and Brighton and several other UK towns, not to mention various capitals abroad as well. And the reaction of the public is almost invariably positive. They are uh, stand by the roadside filming you and cheering, and, and, uh, uh, particularly in places like London and in, in, in Brighton, and they'll be very good about that. Um, though one curious situation on, on one naked bike ride that I took part in was when we passed a woman with one hand busily videoing us on her smartphone while the other hand was covering the eyes of her child. <laughs> Um, talk about the left hand not knowing what the right hand is doing, um, which I thought was a little bit of a pity. Now, what else? Okay, some uh, art galleries in London hold clothes optional previews of forthcoming exhibitions from time to time. Um, clothes optional means you don't have to wear clothes to, to go, if you like, or to be there at any rate. You have to wear clothes to go. It's when you're there that you don't have to. <laughs> Then there's the Great British Skinny Dip, in which large numbers of nudists may swim naked in the sea or in uh, swimming pools. There's an, uh, that's attracted a fair amount of publicity in recent years. Then there's an, the annual Naked Gardening Day, while a small number of show gardens open their gates to naturists on certain dates when otherwise closed to the public. I think we've gone back and not going back. You, 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 the you, wrong way. You, you're using the wrong button. Am I? That's it. Press again. Yeah, OK. Yeah, fine. The overarching organisation for British nudists, called British Naturism, is in the forefront of organising such events, including, for example, an annual winter weekend at Alton Towers, and is starting to see that there is naked life to be had outside the walls of sun clubs. And talking of naked gardening, what is there to stop you enjoying the freedom of being naked simply in and around your own home? Try decorating, uh, doing the washing up in the buff, cooking, watch the hot greasy splashes there, um, all household chores that I find become lighter and less tiresome if done naked and afterwards relax by sunbathing in your garden with a glass of white wine where you're not too obviously overlooked by the neighbours. So, in conclusion... Is it the other? Yeah, I, I, keep, I think I keep on pressing it, it myself, it. don't know who I am. Has it. OK. So let's not be shy about our bodies. They are what we are born with, and they are arguably our greatest asset. Let's not hide them away under layers of clothing when it is really not necessary. Taking off our clothing can be like peeling off layers of stress and tension. Let's make the most of it. It's part of making the most of our short lives. Join a nude walking group. You'll certainly get an opportunity to sample British rain. Um, or perhaps you might like the uh, attend the regular sessions of the Eastbourne Naturist Swimming Club here in Eastbourne. Eastbourne. Okay. This um, we are assailed constantly by idealistic body images, and it's no wonder sometimes that our inclination is to hide our bodies from public gaze and therefore from public judgment. But in fact. Beauty as a concept is, I think, much broader than the narrow, conventional, unattainable images which are sold to us. So let's not be involved in the greatest cover-up of all time, after which, after all, when done in the nude, such a mundane job as hoovering the house becomes, in more ways than one, bearable. <laughs> no. Okay, thank you much, much for listening.
textiles. <laughs> We're all textiles you, tonight. Absolutely. Do you have Do you have any questions? Do you have any burning, burning questions? Yes, at the back. Yes, to Jim. It is, yeah. Jim. Oh, Jim. Yeah. You're over there, before, Jim. <laughs> uh, you, you said it, uh, nudism in modern society mainly came about in Germany, um, and that. That was in the 1920s? Yes, yeah, yeah. post First World War. Really. Yeah. yeah, and then you said that the Second World War and the rise of Nazi sociological and political ideology really hammered down on that in Germany. What was the impact of that in Britain? I don't really know what the impact of that was, but I, th I, th I, th I think a similar situation would have happened in, in Britain too. But I think by, by the 1950s, it was beginning to um, develop again. And uh, um, I, I think the 50s and the 60s, probably were almost the heydays of the sun clubs in Britain, yes. I mean, it did, it did begin to grow again, certainly after the, the Second World War. Where, where's the nearest sun club to um, um, that, that, I'm, I'm asking for a friend, so I just... just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you want to, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you'll have to see me afterwards. <laughs> um, there was a question here. So, yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering why you didn't do this in the nude. Well, there's a very good simple reason for that, really. I was prepared to do so, but the management here were not happy about that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I had to, uh, when, when Keith... Uh, approached me with Philip um, to, to do this talk. They, they did say, could they do it? They can. I had to speak to uh, Chris and John and uh, Viv Berry and say, this is a request. And, and they, I mean, they, they considered it, but uh, uh, same as the, the keynote where, where you did it before. Again, Olga and Russell said they. So, you know, that's it. But I think you are going to go and do it at a, a, a venue in Brighton that I know, the Catalyst. And uh, I think there, uh, it, it, it's not, but the, uh, the venue, the latest music bar in Brighton are are very open-minded to having uh, naked speakers. So. Yes. So, so there you are. If you want to go and see Keith, um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think that's going to be in May. Uh, any other, any other yeah, questions? Yes. One thing bothered me, there, which is you're walking down the lane. There you are. You know, no clothes on. Yeah. And there's people coming the other way, and you felt like you had to put your clothes on because you were doing something that wasn't quite right, and they were okay. Yeah, I mean, th this, uh, this is something that um, oh, is uh, a, a question that concerns matrix walkers quite a lot, really. Um, if we simply do it, and I mean, it might only mean covering up certain sensitive areas, um, but we, 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 we merely do it in deference to, uh, to the other person. We don't want to... Uh, feel that we are unnecessarily offending them. Well, but I, I, I do agree but, but, with what but you said. How could you how could you possibly be because pe well because people are offended by nakedness. Isn't that their problem and not yours? Yes, it is. Yeah, I, I would say that is that is their problem. But uh, we're not uh, majority. Yeah um, I mean as I said those people who do not uh, experience it as cover up, covering up because it's too late. I mean, a generally positive reaction. But uh, it, it, it's something we don't really want to risk. But I do agree, there is that, uh, there is that feeling uh, that in some way we must be doing something wrong because, uh, uh, because we hurry to cover up. But in actual fact... How could you be? Well, yes, uh, yeah, um, yes. The, the, well, one bit to, to go with that is uh, I was out at Beachy Head, yes. uh, Paraguay, yes. as I do, and uh, the, the naked man you who know, had been famously hiding yes. around yes. the country came by yes. and was greeted with cheers from everyone present. I mean, everyone, of yes. every kind. Hey, you get every nationality out there, all different kinds, young people, old people. From everyone, everyone cheered this guy on. Yes, but well, I think that was partly so, why. Sorry, you've got a question. Well, there's nothing really wrong with that. Just, 
Just but I mean, I think that's why you were so passionate about giving this talk. Well, one of the reasons was you wanted to to, to get it out there. Oh well, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's a there's a mission, I suppose, to to get it out there. That's yeah. right. Um, I mean, I had the outside of it, you know, like me as a human being. There's all these guys with fucking great dicks bigger than mine strolling out. <laughs> and, and this is not good, you know. But, um, um, right. <laughs> I hesitate to say on that note. Uh, <laughs> just because I'm not going to say on that note, I'm going to take one more question. <laughs> and then I'm going to. And, and, yes, sorry, Jim, last question. Jim. Last question. Hi, Jim. Where do you think the future of naturism lies? Where is it going to go? <laughs> I think it. I, I, I hope, of course, that it will continue to be uh, as easy as it well, as easy as it now is to, to go naked in the British countryside. But I don't honestly see, and I'm being honest about this, I don't honestly see a great change of public acceptance coming in the near future. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably another, that's probably another talk. It, it, it is, yeah, I mean... Uh, the, the, uh, the thing about the Naked Rambler, which you, you mentioned, is that he, um, he met a lot of reprobrium. He met, also met a, a lot of um, people who cheered what he did, as you, uh, as you say. Uh, but he is a man ahead of his time, and he's probably a trailblazer, I suppose, for what we hope might happen in the future. But I I'm not guaranteeing anything. I would like us to all to become... Uh, uh, freer and easier. I would like us all to be able to go to a beach anywhere and, and strip off, yes. Um, and it needs a few militant people, I suppose, to, to set the tone. But, and then eventually people will follow. But it takes a very long time. The, the whole business